Welcome back, my name is Yaku, this is my workshop. As we promised you last week, today we're showing you how I manufactured a platinum ring. Stay tuned till the end and I'll show you exactly how I made this one. I'm taking the measurements of the diamond to start off with, so I know what I've got to work with. Remember everything from the center outwards, so that's my very first point of starting. You can't change the size of the stone if it's there, you can't change the size of the finger size. So we've got to work around those dimensions. I'm starting with the diamond and then I'm also taking the measurements of the platinum and I'm doing that just to show you how thick it is and what weight I'm working with. Because we're good like that, am I? We're sharing yeah. information, yeah? I'm leaving the square part in the center. I'm really only concentrating on the edges. I need three claws per side and I'm gonna flatten at the ends now so that I can achieve three claws out of the flat area. I'm looking at the front part where I flattened it. The front part needs to be thick enough to, because that's really the top part of the claw that I'm going to be bending. It needs to be substantial enough to hold the stones. As I'm hammering this, I'm realizing I'm finding a pattern on the actual metal as I'm flattening it, which means one thing. It means that there's some sort of a mark on my hammer, which I have to stop now and quickly sort out. So when I get to the point where I feel I've hammered it enough, I've spread it up open enough so I can get three claws out of it, I then mark it with a pen in one third sections and start cutting it in. Once I start cutting it in, I'm using my knife and I'm squeezing those claws slightly apart from each other. I wanna separate them. And the reason for that is I need to get rounded claws not flattened with a hammer claws, they need to be rounded. So I'm spending a bit of time with a needle file and also some sandpaper to make sure that I can get the claws to look rounded. The whole ring has got to flow, it's a very sculptural ring. Once I've got my three claws per side, I kneel the ring, put it into the ring bender, and I'll sit with a shape which is U shape. But if I just keep it like that and I bring it together, I'm going to have the claws touching. And this design is not a design where the claws touch, with a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm bending it like that, and then I'm bending it like this, and then I'm bringing it down. That's the idea. I'm sitting with the ring and it kind of like looks like this. Like two gang signs. Two gang signs, yeah. <laughs> like antlers, it's a beautiful thing. Actually the whole manufacturing of this ring was a, was a pleasure, it was more like sculpting. If you haven't seen the hair-shaped lab-grown diamond platinum crossover ring, what, lots of words, um, <laughs> then please do check it out, I'll put a link in the description. I'm trying to create a rounded area with the claws coming to the top, keeping in mind that my stone's going to be seated in there. But at the same time, as I'm moving along, I'm repeating what I'm doing on this side to this side and continuously looking at both sides to make, uh, to make sure I'm balanced. And as I'm going around, as I'm bending it and I'm seeing the metal that I've twisted, I can then start filing it so that it smooths out into the shape that I'm wanting to do. This is the fun part. Once I've got it bent round like this, I can start looking where the two parts make contact. Because this ring actually has a shape, if you're looking from the top, that does this and then this on the other side and it's a balance point. If you don't bring them together like a puzzle piece you might find that your effect from the ring from the top might be a little bit like this and like that. So you want the shank to come to the same place and then run out this way, run out that direction and then as they come together like a puzzle piece you create a little groove where the one fits into the other.
Now that all that sculptural stuff at the top is ready, I can turn my attention to the shank part. Of course, we've got a very chunky shank because we've been working with a very thick piece in the middle. I need to shave that, make it appropriate for the, for the scale of the ring, and also at the same time, the width. So I'm looking at the width and the height, and I'm shaping that, rounding it. That whole flow needs to come in from the claws right down to the shank and organically go up to the top again. A tip I can give you at this point, if you're looking at smooth motions like that, Rather than looking at the material, once you get it to a point where you're on the sanding side of things, use the light. The light actually shows you, if you've got a light reflection on your ring itself, and this is in a matte format now, and you're looking at the light, the light will be smooth and then you'll see a little kink in the light. So it will, it will telltale sign that something's stopping that light's reflection. So by looking at the light itself, you can make sure that you can file it until that light is consistent all the way on the reflection of your ring. This way you know it's absolutely smooth. If you've got any kind of distortion of the reflection of your light, maybe going slightly down, then you know you need to get a little bit of that material away. That's a tip for today's video. I'm leaving excess wires at the top because I don't need to cut those until I start setting, but I can see that there's a nice rounding for the stone to be seated in. I hope you guys are following me up until this point. I get a little lost in regarding to explaining these things, and I hope that some of this hits the ears and makes sense to you. This is a fun ring to make. It's a lot of fun. The four claw ones are more typical. This is why I made another video about the six claw ones because basically it's so much more dramatic because you have to have so much more movement to get six claws out of it. I hope that you've learned something from this. At this point, I've got a little sculptural piece. I'm happy with it. I'm pre-polishing it and it's going straight to the setting desk so that I can get the set work done. Platinum is platinum is platinum. I mean, this stuff just doesn't get any better. Once you've polished it up to its highest potential, there is no other material that comes close to its reflection. It's a beautiful thing to work with. Please let us know if you've got any questions about platinum or any comments towards the video. You might have seen some of these shots on Instagram, and that's how we roll. As it comes through the workshop, it gets onto video, and it goes out to you guys. Thank you very much for watching again. It's always such a pleasure. Till next time, cheers. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm not missing. Can you see my socks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>